Welcome to AS Tumbleweed, where I strive to dig into the history of America's Old West for perspectives on issues of today. Now, today's question comes from A.T. in Midland, Texas. A.T. asks, Tumbleweed, were there battles over fuel in the Old West like we see over fossil fuels today? Well, I suggest that the closest equivalent in the Old West to fossil fuel was uh, forage. Yeah, forage was fuel. Uh, horses, oxen, and cattle, well, they had to be fed. After all, livestock was pretty much either transportation or sustenance. Grassy areas were like the service stations of the Old West. Uh, yeah, if a traveler came upon a ranch or uh, maybe a town livery stable, all the better. They could not only get their livestock fed, but get repairs made, not unlike today's auto mechanic. Worried about climate change? Oh, you better believe it. Whoa, oh, not so fast. For them, climate change was uh, reactive, not predictive. Uh, they didn't have highfalutin scientists or meteorologists to turn to. Cold wind and dark clouds could spell blizzards. Uh, just as a hot broiling sun might uh, signal a dry spell or even a, a drought. And around 1884, well, barbed wire was invented. Yeah, and ranchers and farmers could now partition off the best grasslands and water sources. They couldn't worry about what kind of climate next year brought, much less next decade or century. They had livestock to feed. Advancing environmental justice, as based on guided by the best science, was of no particular concern. Yes, they also burned wood, kerosene, animal fats, and dung, and whatever else it took to keep warm in the winter. Oh, and the dozens of Indian tribes across the Old West were fuel users too, as seldom they can't more than three or four days in any one place. Their huge pony herds required fresh forage, and their people required water, firewood, and more. At present, we face what I call a fuel war. Fossil fuels are today's bedrock issue of climate change. Nations play a dangerous game with fossil fuels. Make no mistake, it's a war. Despots use fuel as leverage for their devious purposes, and self-serving politicians and their ideologue acolytes seek to use them as a means to retain their elected office. Artificially high fuel prices can be used as blackmail for, against users, to limit the use of fuels and turn them to uh, alternatives more acceptable to climate ideologues. It's a technique similar to how in the 1870s many folks justified the slaughter of the buffalo as a way to drive indigenous tribes to reservations so they become tillers of the land. Yeah, interesting. Well, fuel wars can get right nasty. They were back in the Old West. And about the time barbed wire was being strung across open ranch, ranch lands, you know, a, 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 a Texan on horseback could be charged with a felony with wife he had wire cutters in his saddlebag. The conflict between folks needing to move cattle to market or find better forage and folks looking to protect their valued resources was splattered with blood and mayhem. Shucks, oil hadn't even been discovered yet. <sighs> Lush, verdant prairies were fought over in the Old West, much as nations today fight over fossil fuel deposits and use. All sorts of wrangling occurs to control the world's fuel assets. Are energy alternatives the answer? Well, these days, minimum wage folks and retirees on fixed incomes, well, they're held hostage to energy alternatives that are out of their reach. It'll be decades before electric vehicles charging stations are readily available. Centuries before sufficient cobalt, cobalt and graphite are mined to meet the global green infrastructure needs, like batteries for the cars. And still more decades to erect enough unsightly wildlife killing windmills or install sprawling acres of ugly solar panels. Well, obviously uh, Tumbleweed here doesn't mind tackling a potentially thorny issue. So you're encouraged to submit your questions to asktumbleweed at gmail.com. I'll try to tie uh, today's issues back to the Old West. Y'all also might enjoy my Tumbleweed Saga's novels in which protagonist sat Texas Ranger Luke Dunn must often deal with the cultural issues and prejudices 
of the mid-1800s while delivering justice on the Texas Nueces Strip. I've woven some morally principled messages through the pages of my five sagas to date as published by Defiance Press and Publishing. They're available online in print, e-audio, and e-book from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other popular online booksellers. Do buy your copies of Nueces Justice, Nueces Reprise, Nueces Deceit, Nueces Blood, and Nueces Grit today. And I'm pleased to announce the availability of the audible version of Nicholas Dunn, The Making of a Texas Legend, that's available online today from Amazon. And do visit my posts on Facebook at Tumbleweed Sagas and at Ask Tumbleweed, and check out my website at tumbleweed.me. Meanwhile, y'all do take care.